We're about a third of a mile down Ibex Springs Road and we found a little parking area which was fortunate because these washouts are way too rough for my little 14 inch rims. This is a little farther in and we can see Ibex Dunes to the south. You might just barely be able to make out some campers. There's several people camping out down there. Roxana spotted this one. You're not going to believe this. Way out there. Uros. Yep, wild burrows left over from mining days. Still hiding out, hanging around out there. Not many people enter the park this way. We did see two 4x4s leaving as we were parking, but we're not going to see anyone else on this hike. We were hoping to have a meet up with our friend Philip at Ibex Springs. He's the one who told us about this area. I met him through the Death Valley Road Conditions page. But we were way behind schedule, so he was gone by the time we got there. The clouds brought out the green in the plants, and the coral in the rock, and we even saw a flower or two. Other than the few washouts that my truck wouldn't make it through, the road was in really good shape and a pleasure to walk on. We're going to cross over this little rocky hill area and we're about to come into Ibex Wash. We're getting excited for the big view ahead. Saratoga Springs Road is a sandy 4x4 route that runs that way south to Ibex Dunes and Saratoga Springs and eventually back to the highway. Creosote flowers and a deep washout. This is about the only other spot I wouldn't be able to drive through with my truck. I definitely wouldn't make it. Most high clearance vehicles probably could. This must be the main channel for the wash at the moment. These channels move around and around. Uh, I, one way to describe a wash is it's a giant sandy slope that once in a while the rain hits it and when it does it washes it out. The road was paved during the height of mining operations but as you can see in most parts you can't even tell it was ever paved. Those palm trees mark the Ibex Springs. That's the Ibex Hills to the right of them. There was some gold mining here in the late 1800s, but these talc mines we can see remnants of were more successful and ran for a lot more years. They've covered up most evidence of the gold mining. Here are a couple of wider views of the Ibex Hills. Well, we missed Philip. He'd already taken off for even more remote areas in his 4x4. But we decided to leave him a note because I was pretty sure he was going to come back this way. He saw it and he emailed me a photo of his reply. Hi, Philip. Here's a little dilapidated building. Finally, low enough wind. I think you can hear me if I talk on here. And we're going to figure out how to get over to. spring next. Pretty spectacular. There's clouds but out here it, it can't really rain very much so we're not worried about it.
spring is just a small pool of water. The little shade shed helps slow the evaporation rate. There used to be some pipes that would collect the extra runoff, which wasn't much. But today, when it does overflow, it just kind of feeds the plants in the area. One of the reasons the mines were never very successful was because they had to import almost all the water that they needed to operate. You could use this water if you were desperate, but uh, I've found uh, desert water sources often have a lot of bees up near them, and if you watch John Amersano's Low to High, you might have found out a new problem is that mice and rats and things might fall into that water and be dead floating in there, so I would definitely not want to have to depend on it. Sure is an interesting spot though. Very beautiful out here. So peaceful. Well, the sun's going down. I made it here and I cooked a little meal. And we'll probably have to hike back in the dark, so that'll probably be just about it. We'll give you a few more scenes on the way back, but that's about it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for coming with us. Bye, everyone. <laughs>